Hey, what's up, dudes? What's up? It happened. It finally happened. It's only been 30 years in the making. <laughs> It's about, when did I get, got rid of mine in spring of 84, so slightly just before, uh, we're just coming up on 30 years uh, since I've had one of these. <clears throat> so as I've mentioned many times, um, my uh, a buddy of mine got a 79 Strat. It was a bit of an arms race. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, you got the silver? <laughs> then I love gold. And there's a lot of gold on there. In fact, there's so much gold that <laughs> Fender lost money on every single guitar. <laughs> because the price, you know, I think they spec this out in 78, and the first one came out in, like, 1980. And in 1980, gold is, in real dollars, it was like... Uh, you know, higher than it is even today. Shot up to about, I think, like 2,200. Uh, so it's like 600 was the uh, was the peak. But in today's dollars, that's around 2,200. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, Fender designed it in like 78, 79. But by the time they got around to making it, they... Um, they um they were they were facing a real serious problem you know with uh, the cost of gold and this has a crazy electronic system what's so amazing is that this guitar is all stock and i cannot tell you how many of these i've come across where i had a pass because they ripped the electronics out you know and um so this is a 1982 strat right um it's heavy it's an american ash body it weighs uh, about 10 and a half pounds on the guitar but it's not just the body also you know it's got the brass master um it's got the brass master uh hardware which is solid brass this was like their top of the line model this was like their early version of like the ultra you know they wanted like a flagship model and this was it so it's a Brassmaster uh, bridge and uh, knobs and uh, blade switch tip, which was only only in 1982 was was the was the uh, switch tip um, uh, gold plated brass, and the tuners were uh, gold plated, not brass, but gold plated. And um, they they they're very very heavily gold plated, like. Um, so I think if you call yourself gold plated, you have to put, the gold has to be at least a half a micron thick, which is pretty thin, but you know, you can't say it's like, that's like the base level. If you want to say you're gold plated, you can say gold electro plated. And then that's, uh, like a much less, it's like 0.175 microns by the federal trade commission rules. But if you want to say you're gold plated, you have to put a half a micron, uh, thickness of gold on there which is what a few atoms thick all right we're not talking a lot of uh so it's more than a few atoms but you know what i'm saying it's it's pretty thin so um So um, when they were designing this, to call yourself heavy gold plated, you have to put um, two and a half microns, right, to be called heavy gold plated. Any any guesses on this? Hundred microns, <laughs> and they lost money on every guitar. But I think what it was is that, you know, watches were like 20 microns and like the top of the line 
um, gold plated. If it wasn't solid gold and it was gold plated, what was like the top of the line gold plating? And it was like 100 microns. That was like top of the line jewelry gold plating. And they're like, let's do that because we don't want the gold to wear off. And um, But it was more than that. It was more than just gold. It was, um, you know, in, in the brass, uh, it had a whole new electronic system in it. So this is a volume, you know. This is a tone. And this last one is a two-way switch. So when you're in clockwise mode, it's a regular strat. So this is the bridge. This is the uh, bridge in the middle. This is the middle. This is um, the middle in the neck. And this is just the neck. And um, if we switch it, now we're in counterclockwise mode. Bridge pickup is unaffected. Either way, you still get the bridge. But here, like there's these two. This is these two. Right, neck and bridge. Sounds like a telly. This telly has a big spread between their pickups, too. And you start to get the honk, right, that you get from that pickup separation. So it's really cool, you know. Again, I can't tell you how many of these are ripped out and they put, like, different pickups in. I did it on mine. I ripped mine out and put new pickups in which is just so stupid. So to find one all stock in this condition for what this cost was just amazing. And um, so this is these two. Here, hear the roll off in the high end. Much more uh, warm. my condenser draining over there. And the reason why it's so much warmer is it's these two pickups, but they're in series, right? Instead of parallel. All strats are in parallel, but a humbucker is in series. pretty cool All right now now we're getting a combinations that just you, you can't get on a strat right two pickups in series now here right this is position number four all three pickups are on and it's a combination of series and parallel and what they do is they put these two in parallel, the uh, the neck and the uh, uh, bridge, and then they put the middle in uh, uh, series. So again, a pickup, all three pickups on at the same time. The only way you'd be able to get this would be with three individual switches, but that's a pain in the butt to change you when you're on stage and you just want to have one slider that you can move back and forth. And then this one, the last one, position five, is these two in series. It's in candy apple red. In 80 and 81, these are only really out in Lake Placid Blue and candy apple red. But in 82, they made a bunch of different colors. You get it in white. Uh, they made a, 
I think I've seen a green one out there. I've definitely seen a sapphire blue in addition to the Lake Placid blue. But I think what it was is that you could order all kinds of custom colors and they just accommodated whatever you wanted. Because, again, this was their sort of flagship model. This was the Strat. <laughs> and uh, they wanted it... Um, to be available as a custom order and some people even got the strato burst which was like one, half of one color and half of another color uh, again uh, those were really available in 82 in the dan smith era this is not considered a dan smith guitar the dan smith strat is a very specific strat with a smaller headstock you know like this the the 50s 60s even though this is this is an abomination for headstock right i remember when i got it i was like oh i love this headstock and then when they came out with the 50s i said oh geez they got the headstock wrong but this is the wrong headstock this is the one that they cut incorrectly um my 50s you know japanese strat and the mexican strat uh, and the 60s uh classic uh squire and, and all that those are those are correct those are the right headstock dimensions this this competing story some people say that the jig they used was old and worn out it was just down smaller because it had been worn out other people say they just used the wrong jig but i have a hard time believing that and then the, the other theory is that they just attached the jig wrong they didn't know what they were doing <laughs> which i think worn out or didn't know what they were doing are probably the two most plausible but i think i've seen worn out the most <laughs> Rather than creating a new jig, they just used an old one because it had been worn out. Then it was smaller. But I'm in guitar rig five. This is the Tweedman amp. Tweedman. Um. So, as I've discussed a few times in the past, I owned one of these, but I didn't have the 82. I had the 81. And even though I bought mine in December of 81, it still had chrome tuners. The fender was written in silver. The string trees were chrome. And everything else was gold. Uh, the tip was white plastic. So, you still didn't get the full, you know gold treatment like the 82 did just a few months later and this is what it turned out to be you know and i remember seeing one in the store going oh geez you know oh look <laughs> you know here it is just a few months later and they have it probably i went back to get rid of the to i <laughs> i went back to go ruin the guitar so I, I brought it back in because i couldn't stand the hum i had demarzio super distortions in my ibanez les paul and here i have these single coils here mm -hmm. and uh this is the x1 which is like they're hotter it, it, it is really strong in fact Right before I came on here, I noticed that the E was really wavering. I was trying to tune it, and it was wavering. I said, well, that's that's pickup pull, right? The pickup is pulling the string out of tune. And sure enough, I lowered them, and boom. Went right away. Gone, you know? So, you know, I, my dad was over for Christmas the other day, and uh, we were talking about when we went down to buy the uh, this this exact Strat, except it was the 81, so it, they hadn't didn't have all the gold treatment on it yet. It was still sort of half and half. And I remember uh, he, he, myself and this other kid, Steve, who bought the, the 25th Silver Anniversary Strat that summer, we all went down, and we were bringing my 73 um, Hardtail Strat, into um trade in and uh when we got there you know to my dad's credit he was like look i know you want that strat really badly but you know like, you're here now why don't you try a few different guitars it's like why just walk out with that guitar when you don't even you know it's like just you know, try a few guitars and I, it, it was good advice and i said okay and i tried a gibson victory <laughs> which was their version of a strat and I said, well, I'm not going to buy this. I might as well just buy a Strat, you know. It's like, why buy the Gibson Victory? And uh, and I saw a Gibson Victory up for sale the other day used for about 700 bucks. So I think these held their value a lot better. And then um, the, uh, the other one I tried was a Hamer V, which was really nice. But I just remember saying to myself, and my buddy Steve was like, you know, they're so hard to sit with. He goes, you know, and it's such a, you know, certain look to it. 
I just, um, and it didn't have a whammy bar. You know, again, I've traded in my, my hardtail. I already have a stop tail piece guitar at home with my Ibanez Les Paul. And I was like, you know, I, I, I want something with a tremolo bar on it. So, uh, mm -hmm. after trying out a couple of guitars, they pulled down like an $1,100 guitar. And my dad was like, I don't think so. Put that one away. Might have been a Les Paul. Which I wouldn't have bought anyway, because I had an Ibanez Les Paul, and it was essentially a very similar guitar. It had humbuckers and, you know, a, a stop tail piece and, uh, you know, and a switch right here. It's like, I wanted something different. I wanted a Strat. And um, so the guy says, I said, no, nah, I want a, a, a Fender Strat and Candy Apple Red. He says, well, we got them. I should have asked if they had the Lake Placid Blue, but at any rate, because uh, they didn't do the newer colors at that point. I think it was still just two colors. So he goes in the back. He's like, oh, yeah, we got them. We got a bunch of them. And my dad had called up before we went down. He said, we're having a sale. You can buy that Strat for five ninety nine with a hard shell case, which was actually really good price. And uh, these carried a 1050 list, 1049 in 1981. So, you know, five ninety nine, that's almost fifty percent off. You know, that's a pretty good discount. So he said, No, he goes, I he was over for Christmas and I said, uh actually he just turned eighty eighty years old today. Eighty years old, my God. Anyway, um not only is he old, that means I'm old. <laughs> so, uh they go in the back, they pull out a box, a brand new fender box. You know, it takes them a few minute, minutes in the warehouse, and they come back out. they got a brand-new Fender box. They're, like, pulling the staples off the end. They slide out this case. And they open it up. It's wrapped up in, you know, clear plastic. And, you just, uh, you know, that smell, that <laughs> that brand-new case smell. It's got all the case candy. It's got a little cable and the whammy bar. With, this isn't the original whammy bar because the original whammy bar was chrome with a, with a brass tip. This is obviously not the real one. But, uh... <laughs> So we traded in the 73 Strat. My dad gave him the Strat and 300 bucks. So that it, so if this was 599, that would have been 629. We had 5% tax at the time. So it would have been 629, you know, for the guitar. And so he gave us 329 on the, on the trade end. We only paid 300 for that Strat. And um and my dad gave him 300 cash and we walked out the door with with essentially this guitar, slightly different but pretty much it. And I took it home and proceeded to hate it. <laughs> you know, I'm coming from, you know, uh, playing Van Halen and Black Sabbath and, you know, Ozzy and, you know, all these tunes and Zeppelin. And it just wasn't, I wasn't playing Hendrix. You know, and Steve Ray Vaughan wasn't even out yet. So it was just hard, unless you're playing like Hendrix and sort of getting that, that, that tone now i will say that this is the x1 pickup it is a hotter pickup you know this it's nice and I proceeded to ruin it. I, you know, I was I didn't like this, so I went out and I bought a set of Seymour Duncan stacks, which were great pickups, but you know, and they were red. Of all the things they were red, they kind of looked good in it. Very similar color to this. Uh, in fact, I've been trying everywhere to find a picture of those pickups to to put on. I can't find a shot of them. I did see a used guitar, and you could see them. they were red plastic uh, covers that were you know just straight across. Didn't have any. Um, pole pieces it was just flat plastic and in the middle it had the seymour duncan logo and they were just this flat top a very interesting design so that's a whole crazy story for another day but basically i got those installed and you know it made it better to get rid of the hum but it still wasn't the ferociousness that those seem yeah with that those demarzio super distortions in my ibanez les paul was getting again that ibanez les paul came with those super distortions and uh you know, it just had such a great, such a great tone. I, I just kept going back to the Les Paul. 
and uh, I think spring. So I got this in December of '81. I probably put the the Seymour Duncan stacks in in like the winter of '82, '83, somewhere around there. And then um, I went to Berkeley in the summer of '83. And that's when I sort of discovered the Kramers and started the whole thing. And then in the spring of 84, I finally just traded this in because I just could not come up with the money to get that Kramer. I didn't want to get rid of the guitar, but I wound up just trading it in because I was out of money and they were getting tired of me keeping that on layaway. And I traded it in to, towards the Kramer. And I finally took that Kramer home. Which I also hated because the one I put away and the one I got were two completely different guitars. It wasn't until I changed the neck on that Kramer uh, to an 86 small block uh, droop beak that I um, that I really liked that Kramer. And that, I love that Kramer. And I put a Seymour Duncan Invader in it. And man, I love that guitar for a couple of years. And then uh, in 80, early 88, late 87, early 88, January, February, February of 88, January of 88, I bought the first uh, RG560 and I just was all in on Ibanez. As soon as I got that, I said, this is it. This is a guitar I've been waiting for. It's got everything. It's got single coil. It's got humbucker and it's got a killer Floyd Rose system. And it's got a much smaller neck. I just, this is it. I still have it, <laughs> you know? And, uh, that was the one. And then I just sort of bought a whole bunch of, God, I had a gem seven, seven, seven and Loch Ness green signed by Steve Vai. Throw that on the pile of guitars I should have never got rid of. There's actually a picture of that up on Facebook of me, me standing there playing it. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, you know, this guitar is just, you know, it reminds me of my dad. And uh, not that he's gone anywhere, but... It, you know, it's just sort of sort of a nostalgic piece. And, um, yeah, I've been sort of looking for one for a while, and they're all modified. God forbid if somebody just could keep their hands off of it. So it took a long time to find one in decent shape. And this is in incredible shape. And it was an incredible price. As you know me, I'm not going to buy it unless it's a deal. And this was a deal. In fact, I went with my buddy Bobby to pick it up and he emailed me a couple of days later and he said you know there's a couple of these up on Craigslist and they're a lot more money than what you paid for that I think you really got a deal and I said he goes and they're in worse condition he goes I really think you scored on that I said I think so too it was under a grand you know so even though I blew way past my normal amount that I would spend on a guitar um, I made an exception you know, once in a while for the gold. I love gold. <laughs> this thing weighs a ton. What a beast. And uh, and again, you can't get that pickup combination. I mean, this really was their flagship guitar. Uh, pr pretty much until the Strat Ultra came out. Uh, so I got rid of this, and then they wound up uh, finally... Uh, handing the selling the company back to um, the people who had been working there for 30 years uh, and they renamed it uh, Fender Musical Instrument Corp and uh, there's a couple of different stories out there one is is that they didn't want the Fullerton plant and it was just wasn't included with the sale because they didn't want to pay for it because it was just old and they figured whatever we don't want the Fullerton plant Another story is is that they signed the contract and realized after they signed it, it didn't include the Fullerton plant. <laughs> it only included the overseas plants. If that's the case, then I'd say you got a legal malpractice suit. But uh, the, um, I'll bet it was more the former, that they just didn't want it. And CBS was looking to maybe retain that as a part of a uh, way to sort of recoup some of the money when they were selling out for shorter than they had wanted to. So, at any rate, you know, Fender Musical Instrument Corp. start begins in 1985, but they don't have a U.S. factory. All their guitars in, like, 86 were made in Japan, like, late 85 to, like, late 86. And then they started to trickle in some of the, um, uh, 
some of the USA models, and before they even had the American Standard, which I think came out in either, I think it was late 87, I, if I remember correctly, the first couple of ones we got in, which might have been very late in 86, um, were the, uh, the 57 and the 62 Strat, I th that, that vintage set. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was sort of the first round that they brought out was the 57 and the 62. And uh, I bought a 57. I paid short money. I want to say I paid like 530 bucks for it. Like 520 bucks, which I thought was a really low price. They were expensive at the time. Of course, I worked at the music store and I got a great discount. I got it in Fiesta Red. I had it, it came in a beautiful tweed case. I remember pulling that out from under my bed open in that case and that guitar was so stunning i was like man and i was going to keep it i was going to keep it as like an under the bed closet classic you know keep it as mint as possible play it as little as possible i had learned from this that got beat up very quickly <sighs> i'm like an idiot i traded it for some goddamn esp with a floyd rose and emgs and i was like this is more suits me than this thing of course that guitar I wound up selling, I hated that a couple of years later and sold it and bought more Ibanezes. <laughs> bought a couple of, I bought a white 550, a yellow 550, a, and the Gem 777. And a couple of Kramers. I had the Kramer I had already had and I got another one, a Deluxe. And I paid like 50 bucks for with a snapped neck. And the um, neck was snapped like here. Like some ridiculous, it wasn't at the headstock, it was like at the second fret. And um, I wound up uh, uh, getting a new neck for it. I got a rosewood neck for it. And it, um, that was actually a, a nice guitar. And I traded that to the, to the music guys to finance the Gem 777. Then, of course... I wound up hating the Gem 77. I liked the way it played and everything, but God, I just couldn't stand the fluorescent colors. It's just not my style. Should have kept it. I hated the color at the time, but when I look back at photos, I was like, oh, it, you know, I'd be the coolest guy on the internet now. <laughs> I think I sold it for 900 bucks. Things probably worth three grand, maybe more. A lot of the signatures on those wore off. I sent mine to a guy that I knew who was painting guitars, and he cleared over the signature. Signature was going nowhere. It was in, 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 engulfed in bait, you know. It was embossed, whatever you want to say. It was uh, entombed. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm having a vocabulary relapse. But these guitars are just killer. And, um, you know, like I said, they're just so versatile. You get into these series ones. You know, you start to get these crazy pickup combinations. And they said that some of these were humbucking. But um, I noticed some, a lot of hum, so I, I maybe, I don't know. I don't know, you know. Uh. Uh, 
I, I like it clean because you can really pick out the the different pickup sounds. So we'll put it in regular old strat mode here, and we'll we'll find a like a roomy eight hundred. <laughs> really bright we'll put it in the series mode you know and it goes much darker and then uh let's try something a little bit that's that uh, that's the clean plex where's that cool plex i like right there vintage plex all right we gotta we gotta find some distortion here maybe a little early edward <laughs> this is the old the old standby <laughs> So there it is in the regular, you know, and then we can hit that. So there it is in series. Takes a lot of the edge off. The old Van Halen, the Van 51. So that's it. That's your 1982 Strat. If you're going to get one, try and get the 82. Because if you get the 80 or the 81, they were discontinued early in 83. They were losing money. They were losing money on every guitar. 
just to wire it, I heard, took hours. <laughs> or like an hour, right? Very tedious and painstaking to get. I mean, if you look inside there, that two-way switch, it's just like an octopus of wires. It's a lot of work to get that wired up. It's, it's, it's not pretty in there. <laughs> if you've ever seen one. I haven't opened this one, but I've seen them opened up, and there's a lot of wiring in there. So, you know. It was a big job to wire them up. The gold was super expensive. You know, they, they sort of, uh, they, they were trying to make a flagship. They, you know, they made it to sort of like boost the prestige of the company. But the bottom line is that they lost a boatload of money on the guitar. You know, uh, the word is, is that they lost money on everyone sold. So, and they didn't sell a ton. Unlike the 25th anniversary, which tens of thousands were sold. Um, this one, not so much. So they're not super out there but they are uh you know you, you'll find them but you, you, know, you try and get the 82 with the all, all the gold and the i i think the the finish is slightly better on the 82 because all the 80s and the 80s and the 81s uh, they have a lot of orange peel problems and they have problems where like where the where your arm goes i've seen them where this is all turned black and in the back like where the body rests against it it you know the the finishes all turned black and sort of like started to sort of fall apart. Uh, I got to assume this is all shot nitrocellulose uh, lacquer. That was what they were using. And again, this was their top of the line model. So, you know, it was nothing but the best uh, when this came out. You know, th this Brassmaster stuff is super heavy. And again, the theory at the time was brass good. <laughs> brass good, steel bad. Of course, today I see a lot of uh, stop tail pieces going to aluminum. They're saying, mm, well, maybe all that mass isn't actually a good thing. You know, we we write about mass, we not write about mass. You know, is mass does it equal sustain? I think the theory is is that the more mass, the less it'll vibrate, so it won't pull away. Right, the bridge is made out of you know brass it's going to sustain a lot longer than if it's made out of cotton all right the softer it is uh the more it's going to absorb the vibration but you know uh, aluminum is hard right it's not going to absorb vibration but uh, the i think the theory is is that more mass equals more sustain but i'm not so sure that that's true that's the theory anyway <laughs> great thing about this is is that you know the the action's nice and not nice and high but it's not the the super low action that i just can't stand i, I don't do that well at bending anyway i should get to bed it's 108 a.m <laughs> And I got to drive the kids to school in the morning. So, all right, guys. Oy. We'll try and make our way over here and take a look. You see, it's a little nicked up. You know, it's not, it's not perfect. But, you know, these guitars. And notice that the, the Fender logo is uh, gold. Uh, if you got an 80 or an 81, they made that silver so it would match the hardware. Only the 82 is gold. And John Lennon was uh, all hot on one of these. There's a great picture of him playing this exact color, but with a rosewood fingerboard from like 1980, just shortly before he was murdered. He was quoted as to saying the guitar was the cat's pajamas. <laughs> oh, John. We miss you. All right, guys. As always, beep. Rock on.